Hey guys, it's Maxi here with the final episode of Season 2 of the Young Team, our mother will save. You join us for the final game of the season, a home match against second place, Aberdeen. As you can see in the end, their title chances kind of faded in the end with Rangers running out comfortable winners on 19 points clear. With, of course, this one final game made to go. We've got Celtic in third on 60 points, Hibs on fourth with 60 points. Hearts on 57 and ourselves on 54. We've toiled off a little bit, but we do have a shootout for that final European spot. As Celtic take on Hibs, I believe that could potentially be the UEFA, the Scottish Cup final as well. So I believe both will qualify for the Europa League alongside Aberdeen, with Rangers going through the three or four rounds of the Champions League Champions qualifiers. So, what can we cover? Well, we really do need the money in quickly from the prize money and the television rights because we kind of are nearly 800k in debt. Hopefully that will give us an idea of our budget towards player recruitment. I've scouted a lot of players, but there's a few I kind of want to make moves for, but we kind of need to see what interest there is in our players. The budget is a little bit over at the moment, but it's just because we've basically confirmed for next season that we've given another two years to... Curtis Main, and we've got another two years to Peter Hartley as well. On just terms, thankfully I've managed to get them to drop a little bit, but um, it's just because we've given the younger players bigger, longer contracts just to protect them. Um, Cadden's been offered a long term deal to 20 24 as well, so if he signs that, yeah, we'll probably need to punt someone, but if it increases his value long term, that's the main thing we are looking to do. So he joined us obviously for that last game against. Dundee, since then it's been hit and miss, it's been good for Player Club from Edinburgh, it's been shite for Player Club from Glasgow. So first one after the split, after three, uh, three weeks between matches, travel to Hearts, nice 1-0 win, -win. Curtis Mayne with a drive from the edge of the area before a late red card for Christoph Berra for a shocking challenge and Curtis Mayne just went through him and in the end we gave Livingston, Godman and Seaman some minutes. Tried to go defensive at Ibrox for the last 10 minutes before Ryan Gold put the elect champions in front. We then gave it to about 75 minutes and thought, you know what, we'll go for it. We made attacking substitutions. Unfortunately, we kind of left ourselves exposed. And Eros Gresda got a double in the last 13 minutes, basically crowning Rangers champions at that moment. So they were paraded with the championship. Travel to Hibs. Again, kept it tight, keeping this 4-5-1 we kind of have been using and will be using in the game today. Uh, Marcus Brown with an early goal, uh, on a win, pretty simple there. Negative is, unfortunately, he won't be staying next season. West Ham want the full eight grand wages paid, and we can offer about 15% of that if we're lucky on a good day. So I don't think we'll see him back. And last but not least, we took on Celtic, a very, very different Celtic lineup, now led by Yap Stam. Unfortunately, it was Mickey Johnson with a double again. They went 1-0 up just in the second half. Again, we went aggressive near the end to try and get ourselves back in before Johnson cut off the left and bang into the back of the net, giving it to 2-0 Celtic. Obviously, as well, in the last episode, we're unsure what the situation with the Rangers manager is. I can confirm that, probably to the, the hatred of one of my best mates, Jamie, that um, Graham Murray's been given the job permanently. So, Murray at Rangers, Stam at Celtic. And I don't think there's many SPFL managers that remain the same. In fact, let's have a wee quick look through them. So I'm still at Motherwell, obviously. Graham Murty at Rangers. Stevie Crawford at St. Johnson. Darren Ferguson at St. Mirren. Derek McInnes is still at Aberdeen. Yap Stam at Celtic. Steve Evans at Dundee. Derek Adams at Hamilton Ackies. Steve Clark at Hearts. Alex Neal at Hibs. John Robertson at Inverness, and Danny Crowley at Kilmarnock. And also John Robertson was voted the Football Writers Manager of the Year, slowly followed by myself and someone else. So, yeah, gutted. But I think if we'd have done better in the Cups and, and maybe had finished higher than six, then I could have maybe given myself a better case. But I think him keeping them in a division quite convincingly, with Hamilton going down and St. Johnson in a relegation playoff, who I believe are they playing? Let's go check that. I think they're playing. It's not Partick because Partick's in the playoff below. And they've beat Airdrie, so Partick will be staying in the division. It's Dundee United versus St. Johnson. 
for a position in the Scottish Premiership next year with Ayr staying, uh, coming up, sorry, to the Premiership for the first time. So last game of the season, uh, because there is a bit of a goal swing and a poor record against Aberdeen, I just kind of went a bit defensive and we will use the latter stages of the match to give some of the younger players a, a debut, if need be. So I'm hoping to give some game time to like likes of Ross Stewart, um, our five-star new gen that's come up this season, give him an opportunity. Uh, Rhys McLeod, give him a first match of the season. And from the academy graduates the season before, with a horrible moustache at 16, Martin Innes, of course, we gave him one game last year. So we'll crack on with a 4 5 1. You can see it there basically. Gillespie, Don Hartley, Aldred Tate, McHugh playing in front with Cadden on the right, Campbell, Turnbull playing a bit forward, and Brown cutting in here to give a bit of support to Curtis Main. Quite mentally, see they're the only people that are over a 7 average rating for the season David Turnbull and Curtis Main. So, two squad numbers. Dowie will get the number 37, and Ross Stewart, you'll not be getting 11, you'll be getting 31 because you're 16, you're a youth player. We can't be giving you squad number 11 at that age. So, they're going to line up 4 2 3 1. Frank Ross is usually pretty good in this. Trevor Clark on the left hand side is going to be an interesting one because he's someone who I had at Leeds and was embarked to play for me, but because we progressed so quickly, he never really got a chance. But there was certainly enough of a player there that I was quite happy to take him to a higher end championship club. Well, he's good enough for that level. Probably not, but if you like your if you like your versatile players, I would definitely advise a, a pre-contract on, on him. Good wee player. So Celtic take the lead to go into third place. Tom Rogic with a goal there. We've not had a lot happening. No shots for us. No clear-cut chances. But we've had the ball, so I suppose that helps. But you never know. It could be an opportunity for one of the younger boys to, to come on and make themselves a, a Motherwell hero if they can add to the three um, academy graduates that are on the park at the moment, then that'd be class. But a record against Aberdeen, one draw and four defeats in the last five is absolutely shocking to say the least. But it's not it's not the worst Aberdeen side I've saw, but it's nowhere near the best, so I certainly would like to hope we can do something here. I don't know how they're quite challenging Brown with the chance of the rebound off the post. I just wonder, you know, if we could have been a bit more bolder with some selections, or a bit more sensible at times, then maybe we could have pushed a bit higher, if that's the kind of side that is finishing second in the table. So, still first half. Far from pleased what we see. Or we'll just kind of give it to about 65 minutes. I do want to give the youngsters a decent bit of run out, because then they've got an opportunity to settle in, and an actual chance to make a, a contribution. And especially with the fatigue for the likes of Turnbull and Brown, which was two of the players I was going to be looking to take off anyway. That's good, 11 shots, just two on target, so that can kind of sum up the shooting of Curtis Main at times. And hopefully we can win the young player of the year, we'll check that near the end of the video. But Turnbull is off, he's replaced by young Rhys McLear. Rhys McLear will come in basically as an attacking central midfielder. And we'll also take off Marcus Brown on his farewell, and he's replaced by Ross Stewart. I have to actually double check what his name was. And say forward, just attack. We're not going to give you any defensive responsibilities, kid. Just you got there, and, and David, you there. Let's see if we can maybe get him out in a loan spell next season, and then look to go. So we'll maybe push on a bit more positive now, instead of our usual counter, because we've kept it very, very close. And we'll make that final change, and it is going to be, just looking at my options here. I'm going to try Martin Innes at right back, and I'm going to try Richard Tate as a winger. He can play complete wing back, can he maybe play as a winger? Given that opportunity, because I don't think Cadden's been particularly great, so we'll try Tate a little bit further forward, see if he can maybe get a ball in the box to get to the likes of Curtis Main, and because we are coming near the end as well, let's just get... Uh, I'll try and push him a bit further forward, but he does seem he just wants to do a centre mid. 
So we'll try and risk Alan Campbell. We'll put McHugh a bit further up. And we'll just tell Adam Campbell, do you know what, just play as a shadow striker. I know that wee Al can't play as a shadow striker, but you never know. He likes to bomb forward occasionally, so he might pop up in the, the right place at the right time and maybe get a goal, and we'll finish it off by just going all out. Cause it's the last game of the season. Let's get big Tom Aldred in as a target man, and if Curtis Main just playing off him, and then panic when we've got a back three. So very attacking. Why not? It's two minutes to go in the season. Don't finish with a drab nil nil. Come on, that's not the mother way. Somebody's got to score. Hopefully us. The ball over the top, Hartley's exposed, and it's a good save from Mark Gillespie. But it's, it's a fun risk you take in the last game of the season. You know, it's not really going to affect much, and you know, we'd need a couple more goals to catch Arts anyway, so. Unfortunately, there is a drab now now. It seems to be the common theme in a couple of these videos, a now now draw, but it just shows that when we really want to be, we can defend well, and we can certainly put pressure on teams. We just can't kind of seem to put the ball in the back of the net. But good performance there. Peter Hartley picks up the Man of the Match award, and it was good to give some debuts there, or some first appearances of the season anyway. Stuart gets the debut, McClear and Innes get first appearances of the season. So not good enough, we'll just say that to them just to kind of see how they do. I'll we'll click in here and see what we get at the end of the season. And let's just confirm in 1.848 million. So they have, they're delighted with the top half finish, that's good to see. Um, we shouldn't get carried away qualifying for Europa, we didn't qualify in the end, so that's not too bad. But the main thing is the club finances in the black again, and hopefully we can get some sort of, not really kind of a transfer budget, more a wage budget. We're going to go for one or two players uh, on loans or, or free co uh, contracts. So that's one thing. Let's see if we can hopefully get in amongst the Player of the Year awards. So as we get ready to look at the, some of the awards, we'll take a wee look at the few things that I've got coming forward in the, the pre-season. So you can see here, a lot of these will go, I might offer a contract to maybe Adam Kettings, but I think the rest of them are going to go. Uh, a lot of the staff will be retained, hopefully, but it depends how much they want. We have increased our transfer revenue to 60%, which was previously at 15, so that's pretty good. An attack spell of 425k is not particularly ideal because we don't didn't have a lot of funds there. But you can see there a new kit, a new main kit sponsor. Competition prize money's up. TV revenue is shocking, considering you know in the Premier League down south they get 100 million, we get 553k. So yeah, a lot to go there. Let's see, we managed to sell 1,384 shops with the main people on the back being Cadden, Brown, Tanner, Turnbull, and Hardly. So scouting budget is pretty minimal, and you can see that's a few people I've been targeting, but I'll check them out. But we move on, Young Player of the Year, David Turnbull, as expected, hopefully that will add to his value, now up to 2.4. If we can get him working on his physical side, we should be able to punt him for big, big money. And go this season, Marcus Brown with David Turnbull, finishing in third place. we just click on that and go to the awards. Why is that just giving me... Ah, oh, that's why, I'm clicking the wrong thing. So if W Player of the Year, Football Rivers Player of the Year went to David Vanacek, the guy that seems to be outrageous in this game, but poor in real life. 28 goals and 31. Barnasic get 10 and 31 in second place, but admittedly he does take the penalties. And third place was Alfredo Morelos, with a pretty respectable 21 goals in 37 games. Let's look what else we can look at. Goal of season we've covered. Uh, Players player of the year went to Vanacek as well, which is again very baffling. Team of the year. No more little players in it, but it's Joe Lewis, Barnasic, Goldson, Katic, Logan, Gresda, Arfield, Shinny Jones, Morelos, and Vanacek. So we're 6.88. It doesn't look like any goalkeeper has been particularly outstanding. If you look at the average ratings, you, you can really argue with the likes of Vanacek and Barisic in particular. Top goal scorer, again, Vanacek, followed by Morelos and Tony Watt. Must be the Best goal scoring season he's had in a long time, if ever. It's the first time he's actually ever passed double figures, so fair play in the game. Pretty decent. Good for them. I know he's not staying there in real life, so it'll be interesting to see where he pops up. 
but you can see it in my other row. Not particularly blessed with you know top row scores apart from the hero that is Michael Higdon. Interestingly, Vanacek has won it two years in a trot, so yeah, he's quite rated highly in this game. I'd say overrated, but I don't, I've not really seen him play to be honest, so I just know he get put under a bus by um, Craig Levine. Uh, Marjan Chaved wins the Young Player of the Year, the writer's young player. He scored 13 and 21. Again, he takes Celtic's penalties for some reason. And as I said, the manager of the year, which they don't have one, but whatever it may be, it was Robertson that won it anyway. So I don't know why that doesn't show there, but unless I'm completely blind, which is highly plausible. But uh, yeah, so David Turnbull wins it. So that's Morrow's first winner since Stephen Pearson, and he won it the year after. James McFadden, and of course we've also had a few there, Phil O'Donnell winning twice, uh, so yeah, hopefully we can keep adding to that as the seasons go along. So, that's it for this episode, I'm glad to announce I have a massive 7k wages to play with, and no transfer budget, so that's going to be fun trying to get people's agent fees done, and uh, sign on bonuses as well, because obviously they came out your budget, so it could be fun. I've also just fell out with Ryan Hardy as well, so hopefully we can sell him for Maybe 500k, 750k, and at least give us something to improve the squad with going into next season. Because the team, they think they can finish in the top six. Me, I think we need a bit of luck. But, you never know. Also, Celtic won the Scottish Cup 5 1 against Hibs. St Johnson survived the relegation playoff on away goals against Dundee, not away goals, extra time. So it was 3 1 in Dundee for St Johnson before Dundee United won 2 0 at McDermott Park. For Murray Davidson scored an injury, uh, sorry, extra time to make it 2 1 and keep Dundee United done to the pleasure of Jack Hatton. So, cheers for watching, guys. Much appreciated. Hopefully, you'll join us for season three coming up very soon. I'm now going to sit here and hopefully recruit well and put us in a good position for the 2021 season. As soon as I know what's happening with Brexit in game, I'll let you know and preparing for that awful 22 23 season when we get to it. Because that World Cup schedule is absolutely horrible. So just watching. Again, any thumbs up. Deeply appreciate it if you enjoyed it. Let me know how you're finding FM. As I say, I know it's getting to that kind of mid-stage of how FM's and it is in its cycle. If you're still enjoying it, what kind of saves you're going for. And if you're kind of looking for more kind of custom stuff to kind of keep you ticking through until the new football season starts. But just watching. Take it easy. I'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>